All right, Lowe's uh, 390, Mrs. Scalorn's kitchen. Uh, we are complete with the kitchen. Um, this is a, a unique kitchen in the fact that we've got a couple of design things that we've done that I want to share with everybody that's watching. Uh, here, you've got a transition and crown molding. You have this door stock crown molding on the left that's about three inches on the face, and you have the molding that is from the manufacturer on the right. What we did is we stopped, pulled that molding off, we stopped and returned it short to where it has a small gap before the return of the molding from the uh, company, from the Lowe's um, pro provider of the uh, moldings. Uh, Shenandoah, I think it is in this case. And then the cabinetry itself was over 10 foot long on this run. So over 10 foot long, we talked about it in the very beginning. Uh, the customer was okay with us bumping that cabinet out two inches and that kept it from having a split or a seam in the moldings overhead. But it also gave a place to put deeper things like casserole dishes and stuff like this that wouldn't normally fit in a 12 inch deep cabinet. So that two inch bump out is a nice accent point for this wall, but it's also uh, something that's practical in the fact that it hides where a seam would have been in the painted finish of the cabinets. Now in this kitchen, we have a large cabinet to the left. This is a dishwasher that turns the corner. So we went ahead and we drilled holes through the corners of the cabinets so that the routing of the dishwasher plumbing will all make it into the sink base. Um, also, this customer uh, worked with a designer to have a void corner section. And this is important because this is one of the things I keep talking to the designers about. It's not always the best thing to put a Lazy Susan or the best thing to put a corner cabinet that's a blind corner. This customer wanted more drawer space. And so as you can see, by doing a voided corner there and a voided corner here, she lost a little corner space, but she gained six drawers in the back of the room, which was a big thing for her in this design. The other thing we had was in the bigger cabinet. She went ahead and did the shelf with the underlying rollout tray. So that's the same way it is on both sides, shelf with underlying rollout tray. So just so that you see, whenever you're looking at the practicality, the dishwasher will sit here. This drawer is pulled further than 27 inches. This is about 29, 28 inches, so that this full overlay drawer will not hit the front of the dishwasher when it opens and closes. And then again, same thing over here, we've got the dishwasher, I mean the range, we've got the pull out of the, of the drawer for the front of the range. Now, as far as the other side of the, of the corner, she did a pull out base pantry, base pull out pantry. And the cabinets actually ended at a rock wall or a brick wall. So it actually comes out just a little bit past the, the front of that. So we talked to the customer. She's fine with having the countertop turn up and make that corner. We did a transition up here in the top with the uh, moldings. Same thing, did a return. Then we just took the color of the cabinet, extra toe kick, and returned that back around the inside. Come around here. All of that is complete. Run across, went ahead and jumped the gap at the window. And then come around the other side. Now, one more thing is the customer's getting a 10 inch tall hood, regular range hood. We went ahead and did the microwave conversion on the electrical so that the range hood will need a pigtail. But if you change to a microwave, we are set up and ready to do that. If you have any questions for me on any type of uh, corner or this type of corner layout, give me a call at 423-650-1051. Have a good day.